All right guys, Tyler down here at Emerald City Guitars. As you can see, we're back in the shop today for a little tech video. Now, we sell a lot of guitars here at Emerald City. It's kind of what we do. Uh, although we do concede that not every guitar uh, can be bought from us. So on a daily basis, I get guitars back here that people bring in that maybe they got on Craigslist or Reverb or eBay or even other shops here in town. And they asked me, Tyler, what do you think of this guitar? Can you take a quick look at it? Uh, did I get a good deal? Does it need any repairs? And more often than not, unfortunately, I'm in a position where I have to deliver some bad news to this owner. Either there are some issues that they didn't expect or some damage that wasn't disclosed by the previous seller. And it's just a sad situation for everybody. So I put together a little list of things that you should look for if you're in the market for a vintage acoustic guitar uh, that'll prevent some headaches down the line and maybe some big repair bills as well. So the first thing you wanna do when you get a vintage acoustic guitar is sight down the neck. Now what I usually do is rest the butt of the guitar right on the top of my boot and look straight down, down the fretboard. Now, the neck should be relatively straight, uh, if not completely straight. So if there is any relief, it should be equal on both sides of the fretboard, uh, meaning there isn't any twist in the neck. So most of all, when I'm siding down the neck, I am looking at the neck angle. Uh, that's the angle at which the neck joins the body. Uh, this tells us whether or not the guitar needs a neck reset. Now, if the guitar neck is completely straight, the plane of the frets should point exactly to the top of the bridge, not the top of the saddle, but the top of the bridge itself. Now, this can be really easy to see if you have a straight edge, but uh, if you don't have the guitar in hand or you're buying it online, there are a couple more things you can look for. Uh, one, look at the height of the saddle. See if you can get a close-up picture of that. See how much room there is to bring it down uh, if the action's higher. So another thing to look for is the thickness of the bridge. Make sure it's at its original thickness. It was very common for a lot of years to remove the bridge and thin it out from the bottom and glue it back on the top rather than resetting the neck. Um, it is not a very good repair practice and basically means that in addition to a proper neck reset, you're gonna need to replace the bridge as well. So one big phrase that I always look for uh, in online auctions is bluegrass action or flat picking action. Uh, it's sort of just a dog whistle for this guitar needs a neck reset. Uh, it's the way people justify having absolutely monster action. So rather than admitting that a guitar needs work, they'll say, oh yeah, it's just set up for bluegrass when really it needs a neck reset. So I would look out for those words and uh, definitely let it be a red flag. So after we sight the neck, I'm gonna move down to the bridge of the guitar in sort of this area. In this area is the most common location for really permanently crippling damage to the guitar. A lot of people have totally lost their shirts on guitars that have damage in this region uh, that, like I said, was either undisclosed or furtively repaired in the past. So let's start at the bridge itself. If it's original, that's awesome. If it's not original, that's totally fine too. Uh, bridges crack through the pinholes all the time. It's a relatively common thing. And if the replacement is the same size and it's glued down all around the perimeter, even on the back, then uh, that won't have much effect on the value and, and it's good to go. So where this region of the guitar gets really interesting is the bridge plate. I know a lot of people know that uh, Vintage Martin guys really go bananas over uh, original bridge plates. And not a lot of people understand why. Uh, I mean, it can't affect the tone that much. It's just one sort of brace that sits under here. And that's true to some extent. But the guys in the know really flip out over these original bridge plates. Uh, not because of the plates themselves, but because uh, non-original bridge plates can hide some really, really horrible repairs and horrible damage under the bridge. So to illustrate this, I have a visual aid, uh, which is this top right here. It came off a 12-string guild uh, that had been praying for death for years, and I uh, finally granted it that. But this top was undergoing some issues that you'll see on a lot of vintage acoustic guitars, and luckily we have it here so we can show you from both sides. So issues with the bridge plate, of course, start at the bridge. Bridges lift all the time, they let go, they're not glued well enough, this is common enough, and very easy to fix if addressed directly. But in many cases, uh, they're left untended to, and that's where the trouble begins. People will put screws through the wings, or they'll put a tailpiece on the back, just sort of as a stopgap. So these modifications are done innocently enough, but what happens when the bridge isn't properly adhered to the top? The top itself starts to uh, basically fold in uh, and tilt forward, doing the same thing to the bridge plate. Now, uh, oftentimes the bridge plate will crack, but almost all the time the top will crack across the grain, which is pretty serious damage. All the strength inherent in these tops is with the grain, so when it breaks across, it's bad news. 
So this cross grain breaking on the top is not in itself a death sentence for the guitar. If repaired properly, uh, it can absolutely have a long and healthy life. The issue is they weren't always properly repaired. So there's a certain well-published luthier, uh, pretty famous in the 70s and 80s, who was a big advocate of using epoxy for just about every repair under the sun. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people read his books and a lot of people followed his advice and thusly, a lot of really, really great guitars were permanently ruined by these people. So the issue with a bridge plate is that when the guitar is intact, we really have no way to tell whether the repair was done correctly or it was done terribly with permanent epoxy that will forever leave the guitar basically ruined. So when people get really skittish about unoriginal bridge plates, it's because we don't know about what happened under the bridge plate. We don't know if it's permanently destroyed the guitar. So the third thing I look for, and that's really common, uh, is loose braces. On some particular vintage guitars like Gibson's, uh, you'll know it's real if every single brace uh, is loose. Now, this is not a big deal. Uh, they're very easy to re-glue, but it's work that has to be done and it should be factored into the price. Uh, but it's far from a deal breaker. So the most common braces that'll tend to pull uh, will be the ends of the back braces. You'll sometimes also see ends of the X braces pulling. So a great way to tell whether or not braces are pulling uh, is just to tap the box and listen. Now, I know for a fact that this guitar doesn't have any loose braces. So we'll tap it. Nice solid sound. Now, when we tap this top that definitely has loose braces, you'll be able to hear the difference. Sounds terrible. So now that we've checked for loose braces, uh, let's look to see if there's any cracks in the guitar. This guitar is totally crack free, which is awesome, uh, but it's pretty common, you know, to have cracks on vintage guitars. Uh, again, it's not something that would break a deal for me, but uh, I would check them out, see if they're solid. A good way to do this is once you find the crack, just put a finger on either side of the crack and sort of alternate pressure to see if that's moving or if it has been cleated and it's solid. Uh, if there are repaired cracks, I would also look inside with a little mirror uh, just to see if they were cleated relatively neatly. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see a guitar with just God knows what cleated in uh, trying to repair those cracks. So just make sure they're relatively nice and uh, it shouldn't have a huge effect on the value. All right, so the last thing that I look for, and this is probably the most minor out of all of them, uh, is the frets, see if it needs any work. Uh, when you sight down the neck, you should be able to see if there's any really, really uneven frets. But we're also looking for pitting on the first few frets, on the unwound strings. If the guitar has had a neck reset before, it's almost certainly been refretted as well. Uh, so the original versus non-original frets doesn't really have much of an effect on the value anymore. It's like switching out tires on your car. But if the guitar does end up needing fret work, you know, it's just one more expense. And like I said, it should be factored into whatever you're paying for the guitar. So of course, there's so much more to look at in vintage acoustic guitars. But if you look for those five things, it should pretty well prevent you uh, from getting stuck with a big bill after the fact. So as always, when you're buying a vintage guitar, it's best to go through a reputable shop who you trust, uh, preferably a shop that has techs who have gone through these guitars and are totally straight with you on what's going on and will stand behind the guitars that they sell you. So that's about all I have. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments section. Uh, once again, this is Tyler down at Emerald City Guitars. Uh, I'll see you next time.